Princess Solaris stared wide-eyed down the barrel of a Krell plasma rifle, abandoned by her dead Binar guards, a lone human soldier now her only hope against the ruthless invaders. The once proud capital of Binar Prime lay in ruins, its gleaming spires reduced to rubble, and its streets choked with the bodies of the fallen. The Krell, a race of merciless warriors, had descended upon the planet like a plague, their advanced weapons and armor making short work of the Binar defenses. In a matter of days the city had fallen, and the royal family had been all but wiped out. Princess Solaris, the last of her line, had been rushed from the palace by her elite guard, a desperate attempt to keep her safe from the Krell's clutches. But even these hardened warriors were no match for the sheer numbers and firepower of the invaders. In a brutal ambush, the guards were cut down one by one, their blood staining the rubble-strewn streets. Sergeant Randy Bennett, a battle-hardened human soldier, found himself the sole survivor of the carnage. He had been assigned to the Binar Royal Guard as part of a diplomatic exchange program, a token of humanity's support for their alien allies. But now, with the city falling and no backup in sight, his mission had changed. He was the princess's last line of defense, her only hope of escape from this nightmare. As the smoke from the firefight cleared, Randy and Solaris locked eyes, two strangers from different worlds united by the primal need to survive. Randy knew that if he failed in his duty, if the Krell captured the princess, not only would Binar Prime be lost, but the Krell would gain a powerful bargaining chip against the Terran Defense Force. The fate of both their peoples now rested on his shoulders. With grim resolve, Randy tightened his grip on his rifle and nodded to Solaris. Together, they set off into the war-torn city, the human soldier and the alien princess, each step a defiance against the overwhelming odds stacked against them. The battle-scarred streets echoed with the cries of trapped Binar civilians as Randy and Solaris pushed onward. A collapsed building blocked their path, its rubble entombing those unfortunate enough to be caught inside. Randy halted, his eyes fixed on the debris. Solaris hesitated, the urgency of their mission weighing heavily on her mind. But as she watched Randy spring into action, his hands already working to clear the rubble, she understood. This was more than just a soldier following orders. This was a man driven by a deep sense of duty and compassion. Using his combat engineering skills, Randy worked tirelessly to create a path through the debris. Solaris joined him, her delicate hands unused to such labor, but determined to help. Together they managed to clear a way for the trapped Binar, who emerged covered in dust but alive. As the civilians fled to safety, Solaris looked at Randy with newfound respect. She had always seen humans as cold, calculating warriors, but here was a man who would risk everything to save a few strangers. Their respite was short-lived, a Krell patrol rounded the corner, their plasma rifles at the ready. Randy reacted instantly, his advanced combat armor absorbing the initial volley as he returned fire. Solaris, her psionic abilities surging, joined the fray. She reached out with her mind, planting seeds of confusion and fear in the Krell soldiers' thoughts. The skirmish was brutal but brief. Randy and Solaris stood victorious among the fallen Krell, but not unscathed. Randy grimaced his hand pressed against a wound in his side. Solaris rushed to him, her medical training kicking in as she assessed the damage. They took shelter in an abandoned building, Solaris tending to Randy's injury as best she could with their limited supplies. As she worked, she spoke, her voice low and urgent. The Krell aren't just here for conquest, she said. They're after something. An ancient artifact hidden beneath the city. It's said to grant immense power to whoever wields it. Randy's eyes widened as he processed this new information. The stakes of their mission had just gotten much higher. With the truth behind the Krell invasion revealed, Randy pushed himself up, his hand still clutching his wounded side. Solaris helped him to his feet, her eyes filled with a newfound urgency. Solaris nodded, and together they set out into the depths of the city, descending into the ancient catacombs that lay beneath the streets, the tunnels were dark and dank, the air heavy with the stench of decay. Krell soldiers patrolled the passages, 
their weapons at the ready. Randy and Solaris moved silently, using the shadows to their advantage. When confronted by the enemy, they fought with a fierce efficiency, Randy's advanced weaponry and Solaris's psionic abilities working in perfect tandem. The artifact. It's not just a weapon, she breathed. It's a key, a key to a vast repository of knowledge and technology, left behind by an ancient civilization. Suddenly, a blast of plasma energy exploded against the wall beside them. A team of Krell commandos emerged from the shadows, led by a massive, cybernetically enhanced warrior. The Ravager, as he was known, fixed his glowing red eyes on Randy and Solaris. Without hesitation, Randy charged forward, engaging the Ravager in a brutal hand-to-hand -hand battle. The two warriors traded blows, their armor sparking with each impact. Solaris, meanwhile, faced off against the other commandos, her psionic energy crackling around her as she fought. The battle was fierce and evenly matched. Randy grunted as the Ravager's fist connected with his already injured side. Solaris cried out as a plasma bolt grazed her arm, but they fought on, fueled by desperation and the knowledge that failure was not an option. Just as the Ravager's hands closed around Randy's throat, Solaris unleashed a massive psionic blast. The Krell warriors were thrown back, their bodies slamming against the stone walls. The Ravager staggered, his grip loosening just enough for Randy to break free. With a final devastating blow, Randy brought the Ravager down, the cybernetic warrior crashing to the ground in a heap of sparking metal and flesh. Breathing heavily, Randy and Solaris surveyed the carnage. They were battered, bruised and bleeding, but they were alive, and more importantly, they were one step closer to their goal. With the Ravager defeated and the Krell commando scattered, Randy and Solaris pressed on, their hearts pounding as they approached the chamber housing the ancient artifact. The air grew thick with tension as they rounded the final corner, only to be met by a wall of Binar soldiers, their weapons trained on the human and the princess. At the head of the group stood Commander Xander, his eyes cold and calculating as he stepped forward. Solaris gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. Xander? But you were presumed dead in the Krell attack. Xander sneered his grip tightening on his energy blade. Did you really think I would fall so easily? No, I saw the truth. The Binar people are weak, unfit to survive in this galaxy. The Krell offered me a chance to ensure our survival, and I took it. He extended his hand, his voice taking on a persuasive tone. Join me, Solaris. Together we can rule at the Krell's side, hand over the artifact, and take your rightful place as my queen. Solaris stood frozen, torn between her duty to her people and the growing feelings she had developed for Randy during their harrowing journey. She glanced at the human soldier, seeking guidance, support, anything to help her make this impossible choice. The two warriors circled each other, their energy blades humming to life. They clashed in a flurry of sparks and plasma, their movements a blur of speed and precision. Xander was a master of the Binar fighting arts his technique flawless and deadly. But Randy, with his human tenacity and adaptive combat style, met him blow for blow. As the fight wore on, Randy's endurance began to give him the edge. Xander, frustrated and desperate, resorted to underhanded tactics. He fainted left, then pulled a hidden plasma dagger from his boot, slashing at Randy's unprotected side. Randy cried out in pain, his blade faltering. Xander pressed his advantage, raining down blows until he knocked Randy's weapon from his grasp. He stood over the human, his blade poised for the killing strike. But before he could deliver the final blow, Solaris intervened. Her eyes glowed with psionic energy as she unleashed a blast of pure force, sending Xander flying across the chamber. He slammed into the far wall and crumpled to the ground unconscious. The other Binar soldiers, seeing their commander fall, lowered their weapons in surrender. Solaris rushed to Randy's side, cradling his injured body in her arms. Why, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion, why risk your life for me, for the Binar people? Randy managed a weak smile, his hand finding hers. Because it was the right thing to do. We're in this together, Princess, until the end. Solaris held him close, her heart swelling with a feeling she had never experienced before. 
Together they faced the chamber, the artifact waiting just beyond. The fate of the Binar people, and perhaps the entire galaxy, rested on their next move. With Xander defeated and the path clear, Randy and Solaris stepped into the chamber housing the ancient artifact. The massive room stretched out before them, its towering columns adorned with intricate carvings that depicted the rise and fall of the civilization that once created this marvel. The air crackled with energy as they approached the center of the room, where the artifact itself hovered above a stone pedestal, a glowing orb of pure, pulsating power. As they drew closer, the orb began to shine brighter, its light expanding until it engulfed the entire chamber. Randy shielded his eyes, the intensity of the glow nearly blinding him. He felt Solaris's hand grip his own as the world around them faded away, replaced by a strange, ethereal realm. Ghostly figures materialized before them, their forms shimmering with another worldly light. These were the spirits of the ancient Binars, the creators of the artifact. Their voices echoed through the void, speaking in unison as they addressed the human soldier and the Binar princess. The artifact you seek is more than a mere weapon or repository of knowledge, they intoned, their words resonating with a power that sent shivers down Randy's spine. It is the key to unlocking the true potential of the Binar people. The spirits began to weave a tale of the Binar's past, revealing a history that had long been lost to the ages. They spoke of a once mighty race whose technology and abilities had surpassed anything the galaxy had ever seen. But as their power grew, so too did their complacency and division. The great civilization fell into decline, its people scattered and its achievements forgotten. The artifact was created as a fail-safe, the spirits explained, their voices tinged with a deep sadness, a means to ensure that the Binars could one day reclaim their former glory and unite under a single banner. They turned their attention to Solaris, their ethereal eyes boring into her very soul. You, Princess Solaris, have been chosen to wield this power. It is your destiny to lead your people into a new age of prosperity and strength. As the vision began to fade, the spirits imparted one final message. Use the artifact wisely, young one. The fate of the Binar people rests in your hands. With a sudden jolt, Randy and Solaris found themselves back in the chamber, the artifact now resting in Solaris's trembling hands. They looked at each other, a silent understanding passing between them. The weight of their journey, of all the battles fought and sacrifices made, had led them to this very moment. Solaris's fingers closed around the artifact, its energy pulsing in time with her heartbeat. She could feel the power coursing through her veins, the knowledge of her people's past and the promise of their future burning brightly within her mind. Randy placed a hand on her shoulder, his touch a reassuring presence in the face of the monumental task that lay ahead. Together, they turned to face the chamber's entrance, ready to embark on the next stage of their journey. The war still raged beyond these ancient walls, and the Krell would not rest until they had claimed the artifact for themselves. But with the power of the ancient Binars at their side, and the strength of their bond forged through the fires of combat, Randy and Solaris knew they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. <coughs> As the dust settled around Zargoth's smoldering remains, Randy and Solaris locked eyes, a fierce determination burning within them. The battle was far from over, but they had been given a chance to turn the tide. With a rallying cry, they led the Binar soldiers in a furious counterattack, surging forward to push the disoriented Krell forces back towards their landing zones. The streets of the once proud capital became a brutal battleground, echoing with the clash of weapons and the cries of the wounded. Randy and Solaris fought side by side, their movements perfectly synchronized as they cut through the enemy ranks. Along the way they encountered groups of Binar prisoners, their eyes hollow from the horrors they had endured. Solaris used the artifact's power to break their bonds, and the freed captives eagerly joined the fight, driven by a thirst for vengeance against their former tormentors. Amidst the chaos of battle, Randy's comm crackled to life. Sergeant Bennett, this is Admiral Hawkins of the Terran Defense Force. We've received a distress signal from Binar Prime, 
and are en route with a full battle group. ETA, two hours. Randy's eyes widened as he relayed the news to Solaris. The artifact, she breathed, realization dawning on her face. It must have sent out the signal when we first entered the chamber. Day plan began to form in their minds, a daring gambit that could end the war once and for all. If we can use the artifact to disrupt the Krell's communications and targeting systems, Randy said, we can blind them to the approaching human fleet. Solaris nodded, her grip tightening on the artifact. I can channel its energy into a psionic pulse. It will sweep across the battlefield and render their technology useless. As Solaris began to focus her power, Randy gathered a strike team of the most skilled Bynar soldiers. They fought their way through the embattled streets, their sights set on the looming form of the Krell command ship. Dodging plasma fire and sidestepping the fallen, they reached the base of the massive vessel. Randy led the charge, planting explosives at key structural points, his hands steady despite the chaos raging around him. Just as they withdrew to a safe distance, Solaris unleashed the artifact's energy in a blinding wave of psionic force. The pulse washed over the Krell forces, shorting out their weapons and communications devices. The command ship, its defenses crippled by Randy's explosives, listed heavily to one side, smoke pouring from its ruined engines. High above the planet's surface, the skies lit up with the telltale flashes of Terran plasma cannons. The human fleet had arrived, catching the Krell completely off guard. The alien ships, their shields down and targeting systems offline, could do little to defend against the onslaught. Terran fighters swarmed the Krell vessels, picking off their turrets and engines with surgical precision. On the ground, Randy and Solaris watched as the tide of battle turned in their favor. The Krell, their command structure in disarray, and their forces in retreat were no match for the combined might of the Bynar resistance and the Terran fleet. The streets rang with cheers as the last of the alien invaders were driven from the capital, fleeing towards their battered landing crafts. But even as the Bynar people celebrated their hard-won victory, Randy and Solaris knew that their work was far from over. The artifact, still pulsing with untold power, was a reminder of the greater challenges that lay ahead. As they looked to the stars, they knew that the fight for Bynar Prime was just the beginning of a much larger struggle, one that would determine the fate of the entire galaxy. As the dust settled on the war-torn streets of Binar Prime, Randy and Solaris rolled up their sleeves and got to work. The once proud capital lay in ruins, its buildings reduced to rubble, and its infrastructure shattered. But with the knowledge and technology unlocked by the ancient artifact, they had the tools they needed to rebuild. Solaris poured over the artifact's vast repository of information, her eyes alight with the possibilities it presented. She worked hand in hand with Binar engineers and scientists, using the advanced schematics and materials to design new, resilient structures that could withstand even the harshest assaults. Randy, meanwhile, focused on bolstering the planet's defenses. He worked with Binar and human military leaders to create a network of early warning systems, anti-aircraft batteries, and shielded bunkers. Under his guidance, the once vulnerable planet became a fortress, ready to repel any future invasions. As they labored side by side, Randy and Solaris found themselves drawing closer. The bond they had forged in the heat of battle, the trust they had placed in each other when all seemed lost, had blossomed into something deeper. They stole moments together when they could, a touch of the hand here, a lingering glance there. But their newfound peace was not to last. Months after the Krell invasion, as Binar Prime was beginning to thrive once more, a new threat emerged from the depths of space. The Vorgax, a race of ancient biomechanical horrors long thought to be extinct, had returned, drawn by the power of the artifact. They descended upon Binar Prime in a swarm of living ships, their twisted forms pulsating with an unholy energy. Their goal was clear, to consume the artifact and all life in the galaxy, to feed their insatiable hunger for power and destruction. Randy and Solaris sprang into action, rallying the Binar and human forces to meet this new threat. They utilized every weapon and tactic at their disposal, from advanced energy weapons to psionic blasts. But the Vorgax were relentless, their numbers seemingly endless. 
it was Solaris who made the critical discovery. As she delved into the artifact's knowledge once more, she found that its energy had the power to disrupt the Vorgax's biomechanical systems, rendering them vulnerable. With this knowledge in hand, Solaris focused the artifact's power, creating a massive energy field that enveloped the entire planet. The field pulsed with a brilliant light, causing the Vorgax ships to falter and convulse. Seizing the opportunity, Randy led a combined human and Binar fleet in a desperate charge against the Vorgax swarm. Fighters darted between the living ships, unleashing volleys of plasma fire, while capital ships unleashed broadsides of devastating energy beams. The battle was intense and brutal, the void of space lit up with the flash of explosions and the glow of energy weapons. Losses mounted on both sides, ships erupting into fireballs as they were torn apart by enemy fire. Randy's own ship, the TDF Dauntless, was badly damaged, its hull breached and its engines failing. With no other choice, Randy gave the order to abandon ship, leading his crew to the escape pods. As his pod jettisoned from the dying ship, Randy watched in horror as a Vorgax ground force swarmed over the surface of Binar Prime, their grotesque forms tearing through the planet's defences. His pod, caught in the crossfire, spiralled out of control, plummeting towards the planet's surface. The impact was jarring, the pod slamming into the ground with a sickening crunch. Randy, battered and bruised, kicked open the hatch, emerging into a hellish landscape of fire and destruction. All around him, Vorgax warriors rampaged, their biomechanical appendages ripping through Binar and human soldiers alike. Randy gripped his pulse rifle tightly, his jaw set with determination as he prepared to make his stand. Suddenly a Vorgax warrior loomed over him, its grotesque form towering above him. Randy raised his rifle, but the creature was too fast. It lunged forward, its razor-sharp claws slashing towards Randy's throat. Randy rolled to the side, narrowly avoiding the deadly blow. He came up firing, his pulse rounds tearing into the Vorgax's biomechanical flesh. The creature howled in pain, but it did not fall. Instead, it charged forward, its claws slashing and its jaws snapping. Randy fought with every ounce of skill and strength he possessed, his rifle bucking in his hands as he poured fire into the Vorgax warrior. But more Vorgax were closing in, drawn by the sound of battle. Randy knew he couldn't hold out for long. He needed to find Solaris to make sure she was safe. With a final burst of fire, he brought down the Vorgax warrior and sprinted towards the heart of the city, where he knew Solaris would be, using the artifact's power to hold back the Vorgax onslaught. As he ran, explosions rocked the ground around him and the screams of the dying filled the air. But Randy pushed on, his heart pounding in his chest, his mind focused on one thing and one thing only, reaching Solaris and ending this nightmare once and for all. He rounded a corner and skidded to a halt, his eyes widening at the sight before him. Solaris stood in the center of a plaza, the artifact hovering before her, its energy pulsing in waves that washed over the Vorgax horde, causing them to convulse and falter. Randy sprinted to Solaris's side, his rifle at the ready. We need to get out of here, he shouted over the din of battle. There's too many of them. Solaris rose into the air, her body glowing with a brilliant blinding light. She raised her hands and the energy exploded outward, washing over the Vorgax horde like a tidal wave. The Vorgax screamed, their biomechanical forms twisting and contorting as the energy tore through them. They fell in droves, their bodies disintegrating into ash and dust. But the effort was taking its toll on Solaris. Randy could see the strain on her face, the way her body trembled with the sheer power she was channeling. Solaris, he shouted, his voice desperate, you have to stop, it's killing you. But Solaris didn't stop. She pushed harder, pouring every ounce of her strength into the artifact. The energy intensified, the light growing brighter and brighter until it was almost unbearable. And then, with a final desperate push, the Vorgax horde shattered, their forms disintegrating into nothingness. The energy field pulsed one last time and then dissipated, leaving only silence in its wake. Solaris fell to the ground, the artifact tumbling from her grasp. Randy rushed to her side, cradling her in his arms. But Solaris's eyes fluttered open, 
a weak smile playing across her lips. I'm not going anywhere, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Randy helped Solaris to her feet, his arm around her waist supporting her. Together they looked out over the war-torn city, knowing that the battle had been won, but the war was far from over. For out in the depths of space other threats lurked, other enemies waited to be faced. But for now, in this moment, Randy and Solaris had each other, and the knowledge that together they could face anything the universe threw at them. Randy fought through the war-torn streets, pulse rifle blazing as he cut down Vorgax warriors with ruthless efficiency. The biomechanical horrors swarmed around him, their razor-sharp claws and gnashing jaws seeking to rend him limb from limb. But Randy was a force to be reckoned with, his every movement a testament to his skill and determination. He ducked and weaved, his rifle spitting out a steady stream of plasma bolts that tore through the Vorgax ranks. Gore splattered the rubble-strewn ground as the creatures fell, their twisted forms writhing in their death throes. Randy pressed forward, his eyes scanning the battlefield for any sign of refuge. Suddenly, a group of Binar resistance fighters emerged from the shadows, their weapons trained on the approaching Vorgax. They motioned for Randy to join them, and he sprinted towards their position, providing covering fire as he went. Sergeant Bennett, Terran Defense Force, Randy introduced himself, his voice strained from the exertion of battle. Damn good to see some friendly faces out here. The leader of the resistance group, a grizzled Binar veteran named Zaxa, nodded in acknowledgement. We've been fighting these abominations for weeks, hitting them where we can, but it's not enough. We need to strike at the heart of their operation. Randy's mind raced, a plan forming even as the Vorgax renewed their assault. The command ship, he said, his voice low and urgent. If we can get inside, plant some charges in the right places, we might be able to take it down from within. Zaxa's eyes narrowed, considering the proposal. It's a suicide mission, he said, his voice grave, but it might be our only chance. We've got a few shuttles hidden nearby, should be able to get us close enough to board the ship. Randy nodded, his jaw set in grim determination. He turned to the other resistance fighters, his voice ringing out over the chaos of battle. All right, listen up. We're going to infiltrate the Vorgax command ship and blow it straight to hell. It won't be easy, and some of us might not make it back. But if we succeed, we'll be giving the Binar and human forces a fighting chance. Who's with me? The fighters roared their approval, their weapons raised in salute. Randy felt a surge of pride and purpose, knowing that these brave men and women were willing to lay down their lives for the greater good. They boarded the shuttles, the cramped confines filled with the nervous energy of impending battle. As they rocketed towards the looming form of the Vorgax command ship, Randy's thoughts turned to Solaris, to the bond they had forged through the fires of war. He knew she would be fighting with everything she had, using the artifact's power to hold back the Vorgax onslaught. The shuttles slammed into the command ship's hull, the impact jarring Randy to his bones. They poured out into the twisted organic corridors, their weapons at the ready. The ship's interior was a nightmarish labyrinth, pulsing with a sickening alien life. Vorgax guardians, their forms even more grotesque and powerful than the warriors on the surface, attacked with a savage ferocity. Randy and his team fought back, their weapons tearing through the abomination's flesh and bone. They pushed deeper into the ship, following the pulsing conduits that seemed to be the lifeblood of the vessel. The further they went, the more Randy began to suspect that there was something more to the Vorgax, some guiding intelligence behind their actions. And then, as they breached the central core, they saw it. A vast, pulsating mass of flesh and machinery, its tendrils extending into every part of the ship. It was a living thing, ancient and terrible, its consciousness reaching out to control the Vorgax swarms. Randy felt a chill run down his spine as he realized the true scope of the threat they faced. This was no mere invasion, but an attempt by an ancient, malevolent intelligence to consume all life in the galaxy. They set to work, planting explosive charges at key structural points throughout the core. But as they prepared to make their escape, the Vorgax guardians attacked in force, their numbers threatening to overwhelm the infiltration team. Randy knew what he had to do. 
With a last desperate look at his comrades, he shouted for them to run to get clear of the blast radius. As they fled, Randy stood his ground, his rifle blazing as he held off the guardians with every ounce of skill and strength he possessed. The charges detonated, the explosions ripping through the command ship's core. Randy felt the heat wash over him, felt the searing pain as the flames consumed his body. But even as his life ebbed away, he took solace in the knowledge that his sacrifice had given the Binar and human forces a chance at victory. On the surface, Solaris felt Randy's final moments through their psychic bond. She felt his pain, his determination, and his unwavering love for her and for the cause they had fought for. Grief and rage surged through her, mingling with the raw power of the artifact. With a scream of anguish and fury, Solaris unleashed a massive wave of psionic energy. The artifact amplifying her power to unimaginable levels, the energy swept across the battlefield, obliterating the remaining Vorgax forces and purging their corruption from the planet's surface. As the dust settled, the Binar and human forces emerged victorious. The Vorgax threat vanquished at last. But the cost had been high, and none felt the weight of that sacrifice more than Solaris. She mourned Randy's loss, her heart aching with a pain that seemed almost too much to bear. But even in her grief, she knew that his sacrifice had not been in vain. He had given his life to ensure the survival of her people, to give them a chance at a future free from the shadow of the Vorgax. And so as Solaris looked out over the war-torn landscape of her homeworld, she made a silent vow. She would honor Randy's memory by rebuilding her civilization, by creating a society that embodied the ideals they had fought for. And she would never forget the human soldier who had shown her the true meaning of courage, sacrifice, and love. In the aftermath of the Vorgax invasion, Solaris poured her energy into the daunting task of rebuilding Binar Prime. She walked among the ruins of once great cities, the artifact's power pulsing through her as she willed the shattered buildings to reform and the scorched earth to heal. The Binar people looked to her as their savior, their eyes filled with hope and gratitude as they witnessed the miraculous restoration of their world. But even as the planet began to mend, Solaris felt a hollowness in her heart, a void that could not be filled. The loss of Randy, her human ally and the man she had grown to love, weighed heavily upon her. She threw herself into her work, determined to honor his memory by creating a world he would have been proud of. As the days turned into weeks, Solaris worked tirelessly to unite the disparate Binar clans, using her influence and the power of the artifact to forge alliances and quell old rivalries. She met with human diplomats, strengthening the bonds between their peoples and laying the groundwork for a lasting partnership. But even as she worked towards a brighter future, a dark secret lurked in the shadows. Solaris uncovered evidence of a conspiracy, a faction of Binar elders who had been working with the Vorgax all along. Led by none other than Xander, her former betrothed, these traitors had seen the invasion as an opportunity to seize power for themselves, overthrowing the royal family and installing themselves as the new rulers of Binar Prime. Solaris confronted Xander in the heart of the capital city, her eyes blazing with righteous fury. The once bustling streets were now empty, the citizens having fled in fear of the impending showdown. You betrayed our people, Solaris accused, her voice ringing out across the deserted square. You conspired with the very monsters who sought to destroy us. Xander sneered, his hand resting on the hilt of his energy blade. I did what was necessary for the survival of our race. The royal family was weak, unfit to lead us into the future. The Vorgax offered us a chance to seize our destiny, and I took it. He reached into his robes and withdrew a pulsing orb, a dark twin to the artifact Solaris possessed. With this power, I will control the Vorgax. I will bend them to my will and use them to conquer the galaxy. And you, Solaris, will either join me or be crushed beneath my heel. Solaris's grip tightened on her own artifact, its energy surging through her body. I will never join you, Xander. I will stop you, no matter the cost. The two Binars clashed, their artifacts unleashing waves of raw power that tore through the city. 
Buildings crumbled and streets cracked as the very fabric of reality warped around them. Solaris and Xander were locked in a deadly duel, their energies crackling and flashing as they struggled for dominance. Solaris felt the artifact's power surging through her, filling her with a strength she had never known. She pushed back against Xander's onslaught, her own energy blasts slamming into his dark shield. The ground shook beneath their feet, the air sizzling with the heat of their conflict. But even as she gained the upper hand, Solaris sensed something was wrong. The artifacts, pushed to their limits, had begun to destabilize, their energies spiraling out of control. She realized with a sinking feeling that if she didn't act quickly, the resulting explosion would tear Binar Prime apart, undoing all the work she had done to rebuild it. With a final desperate surge of power, Solaris shattered Xander's shield and sent him flying across the square. He lay still, his artifact tumbling from his grasp. Solaris staggered forward, her own artifact pulsing erratically in her hands. She knew what she had to do. Taking a deep breath, Solaris reached out with her mind, drawing the energy of both artifacts into herself. She felt the power coursing through her, a raging torrent of pure energy that threatened to consume her entirely. As the artifact's energies merged within her, Solaris saw a vision of Randy, his eyes filled with love and pride. He smiled at her, extending his hand in a final gesture of support and farewell. Tears streaming down her face, Solaris rose into the air, the artifact's power lifting her higher and higher. She could feel the energy building within her, a cataclysmic force that would soon be unleashed. With a final silent prayer for her people, Solaris released the energy in a blinding flash of light. The artifact's power consumed her, burning away her mortal form, until nothing remained but a shimmering moat of pure energy. The explosion rocked Binar Prime, a shockwave of power that rippled across the planet's surface. But instead of destruction, the energy brought healing, mending the last of the war's scars and infusing the world with a newfound vitality. As the light faded, the Binar people emerged from their shelters, their faces filled with awe and grief as they realized what had happened. Solaris, their princess and savior, was gone, having sacrificed herself to protect them one last time. In the days that followed, the Binars and their human allies gathered to mourn Solaris and celebrate her heroism. They built monuments in her honor, great towers of shimmering crystal that caught the light of the sun and cast rainbows across the land. They told stories of her bravery and compassion, passing them down from generation to generation, and as the alliance between their peoples grew ever stronger, they knew that they carried the memory of Solaris and Randy in their hearts, two heroes whose love and sacrifice had forged a bond that would endure for centuries to come. Together, the Binars and humans turned their eyes to the stars, ready to face whatever challenges and enemies lay ahead. They were a united force, tempered by the fires of war and bound by the unbreakable ties of friendship and shared loss. And though Solaris and Randy were gone, their spirits lived on, watching over the people they had fought so hard to protect. Their legacy endured, a shining beacon of hope and courage that would guide the way for generations to come. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.